Welcome to The Great Podcast, the show where we take a look at the important men and women of history and decide once and for all if they are worth all the fuss. I'm Jordan. And I'm David. Well done. Well done. All right. Let's just hop right into this one because it's a long one. And by hop right into it, I mean let's take an aside briefly. That's right. Imagine, if you will, a river. Beautiful river flowing north Mm -hmm. beneath a brilliant sun. I see it. Upon the river floats a magnificent pleasure barge. Nice. Attendants are moving about the deck, filling drinks and ensuring all the elites on board are as comfortable as possible. As they should. It is a bright and sunny day. Perfect day by most people's estimation. So perfect, in fact, that several on board have decided that it would be lovely to take a swim. Naturally. Soon, however, the sounds of splashing and laughter turn to screaming and oh. thrashing. Oh. Save him, someone yells. More people jump into the water, desperate to save the man who is now caught up in the current, flailing oh, to stay above idiot. the water. <laughs> Can't swim, bro. And that's the that's the opening little vignette. So now. Well, now we got the backstory. Well, now we gotta figure out what happened. Oh man. I might start adding these in because they're kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, normally we would do a recap of the previous emperor or two to catch everyone up. Mm -hmm. And we'd also normally skip over an emperor or two because they're kind of boring. Right. The first time Mm -hmm. in this podcast history, we are going straight from one emperor to another Ah, emperor. Straight succession. And we know that it's Hadrian. Yeah. You remember that. that. I remember that because we definitely didn't take like six weeks off. Didn't. Nope. And if you're listening in the future, this came out the week after Trajan's episode. (laughs) 100%. Better believe it. Don't look at the date. So Hadrian... La- overlaps Nerva and Trajan mm-hmm. very well. So we won't do a recap. We'll just start with Hadrian's Wonderful. life. Now, before we begin, how do you think he's going to do? Well... Following Trajan. Well, Optimus there's, Trajan. There's one thing from his name that is remembered in history. Mm-hmm. So he probably does okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of something about this man, That's so right. I guess he did all heard right. heard of Hadrian's Wall. I'm yeah, there it is. sure we will talk about it. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> never. <We laughs> never, never would we. <laughs> all right, another thing. I keep saying we're going to get started, but there's one last thing. Uh, a note on sources. Mm-hmm. We're approaching the... Damn, there's not very many sources right. for this time period. Right. We uh, lost Suetonius last mm-hmm. time. We do have Cassius Dio, mm-hmm. who is about a uh, hundred, not quite a hundred years from now, but in the future a little bit. And the Historia Augusta starts now. Hey, the Historia Augusta is a really fun book, uh huh, because it is basically a collection of biographies of the emperors from Hadrian to Diocletian. Okay, and it's probably mostly made up. Okay, <laughs> I mean that's what we like about our history when it's mostly made up. Yeah, we don't even know exactly who wrote it. It claims to be written by about six different people. Okay. But modern thinking is it's one dude. Just claiming to be different people. Yeah. And he All messes right. things up. My my edition of this from the 70s that I've been reading from mm-hmm. has like notes from the translator guy oh, yeah. being like, yeah, this is not true. Like that doesn't make sense. It doesn't no. line up at all. Seems like he's confused. <laughs> Seems like he just didn't want to talk about this Seems anymore. Seems like he's confused. Right. <laughs> Dementia, so yeah. uh, as always, grain of salt. But we'll That's make right. this as fun as we can. So Hadrian. Mm-hmm. Was born January twenty fourth, seventy six CE. Okay, this would be the reign of Vespasian. Mm-hmm. So a little while back, his father was Aelius Hadrianus Afer, and his mother was Domitia Paulina. They were a senatorial family. Hadrian's great 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 grandfather had Way been the back. first one in the family to enter the Senate. So they've been around oh, for a while. Long, okay, yeah. So probably around a Augustus' known time. Family, yeah. frankly, Hadrian would have received a solid education in his early mm-hmm. youth. Uh, His father expected him to follow in his footsteps. But Aelius would not see his son grow to become a man. Oh, no. He died when Hadrian was only 10 years old. Sad day. But as a result, Hadrian was kind of informally adopted, not officially adopted, Mm. by his cousin Trajan. Oh, okay. And another man named Atianus. Kind of a joint, we'll just make sure you get the upbringing you need. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they weren't taking care of him like, Walking him across the street, right? But right. they were financially supporting him. And again, this is long before Trajan was emperor, or mm-hmm. even had aspirations mm-hmm. to become emperor. Despite this setback in Hadrian's life, he continued in his studies. He was very fond of Greek culture and devoted a good deal of his time studying the ancient Greek philosophers and teachers. This earned him the nickname of the Little Greek, which <laughs> wasn't quite polite. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was a we're, little bit... We're Romans. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> look at the Little Greek guy. Yeah. Uh, this nickname may have been perpetuated by his rival, Servianus, mm. uh, the bully who always took Hadrian's 
lunch money when he was small. Right. Uh, that he's was a thing. I'm yeah, sure. He's a real person, but that part's made up. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at 15 years old, Hadrian returned to his hometown and began his military training. Okay. Uh, this was hindered slightly by his apparent love for hunting. Which doesn't sound like it would be a, a hindrance to military hand training. In hand. Right. Uh, it turns out Servianus tattled to Trajan uh, okay. about Hadrian's excessive hunting habits, eh, as bullies are wont to do. Right. Uh, this was so out of control, apparently, that Trajan recalled him back to Rome oh. and was like, okay, we're going to get you in line. He's probably uh, like, I'm spending months in the woods killing everything that moves. <laughs> the only thing I can think is that he must just not have been doing his homework. Yeah, he was probably just neglecting what was his responsibilities right. it's just, just like man hunting hunt sure instead. is more fun it's, we we right. know rednecks who yeah. totally didn't come to school because they were 100 percent. so true uh no harm no foul however uh as with trajan's connections hadrian soon found himself on the board of 10 which is kind of like senator light okay it's a it's a good way for young noblemen to kind of learn the trade mm-hmm. and uh, do like paperwork. an internship kind of yeah, yeah, they probably wouldn't have thought of it that way, but yeah, sure, but that's I mean, basically that's what, what it is. is. Uh, and around this time, his sister got married. Yay! Yay! To Servianus! Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that's, you know, now he's brother-in-law Servianus, still giving him noogies <laughs> at the wedding. I'm, I Damn assume. bullies. I know. Next, Hadrian was appointed military tribune of a legion in 95 CE. Okay. So despite kind of slacking off, he's still mm-hmm. starting up the cursus honorum. This is your standard prerequisite that you have to serve a little bit in the military before you join politics, because obviously the Roman military is a very important part of the state. Yes. The following year, he went off on another stint as tribune for another legion, this time Mm. in Lower Moesia. Now, if you're listening quickly through and not taking months between episodes, uh, you'll recognize that Lower Moesia is a place that Domitian created Mm -hmm. because the war. Yep. Yep. And this is around that time. So the province is still in the thick of fighting and instability when he is appointed as military tribune. So likely he saw a decent bit of fighting. Yeah, pretty volatile place, probably, mm-hmm. I imagine. Yeah, not a great place to be at this time, or most times in Roman history, frankly, as we will see. I couldn't tell if he did much fighting, but what I do know it is, it is that... Uh, pff, the, I've tried to say this twice now. Basically, he heard a prophecy at okay. this time while he was out there. Care to guess what the prophecy said? That, I don't I don't know. You'll win and become great. You'll be emperor, (laughs) is what it said. (laughs) So according to the Historia Augusta, quote, In Lower Moesia, he is said to have learned that he would be emperor from an astrologer, who told him the same things which, he had found out, had been predicted by his great uncle Alias Hadrianus, a man skilled in astrological matters. Oh, wow. Good old astrology proving its efficacy once again. That's right. Hey, you're going to be the emperor. I knew it. I knew it. My great uncle said something about that. Now I'm going to work really hard to becoming emperor. (laughs) Self-fulfilling prophecies are the best prophecies. Yeah. Um, We will soon find that the Historia Augusta loves its prophecies. Well, I mean, they all came true, so... Even when they don't make any sense at all. Not to make sense. But no time to worry about the prophecy. Now, Domitian is dead, and (gasps) Nerva has just declared Trajan will be his heir. Okay. Remember, that happened pretty quickly. Right, yeah. Because things weren't looking good for Nerva. Mm -hmm. And Hadrian looks like just the right young man to deliver this great news to his guardian. And he set off at, hey, Servianus was also dispatched. Quite a few people were dispatched. Mm -hmm. This was important news. And uh, Servianus really wanted to beat Hadrian there. Naturally. But he didn't. That's right. Suck it, nerd. (laughs) Get out of here, sucker. So... Trajan is proclaimed heir, and because Hadrian's the one that delivered the news, mm-hmm. he looks pretty good in Trajan's That's eyes. Right. It's a good good way to start. But Servianus would get his revenge, and he wouldn't have to wait long for it either. If you remember, Nerva died pretty quickly yeah. of a stroke <laughs> yeah. within months, yeah, unfortunate. and someone needed to go tell Trajan up in Germany once again. So the race started over. Hadrian packed up his carriage and hustled out of Rome. He got a good ways before he was intercepted by Servianus and his thugs. What? <laughs> Just straight up beat the man up? Yeah. No. I, while researching this, I'm like, okay, I need to exaggerate this a bit, but it does sound like there was this like pretty intense rivalry for yeah. a little bit. So they broke his carriage. Oh, no. And they were like, later, nerd, ha, and kept going on north. <laughs> little did they know that now. Hadrian was committed, and he trudged his way up on foot and beat them there. How? I I don't know. They're just bad. They're really bad. They were probably thinking there's no way he can keep up. We got it. 
We Tortoise win. Tortoise in the hair. Yep. That's the story. Exactly. They got too cocky. He knelt before Trajan and declared him emperor. Oh, probably that's pretty flashy. Giving Servianus the finger as he rolled that's up a right. little too late. Just right behind the back. Just yep. <laughs> so Trajan set about his glorious nineteen and a half year reign. Meanwhile, Hadrian continued along his path on the Cursus Honorum, mm. likely expecting that now he truly had a shot mm-hmm. at becoming the emperor and fulfilling those prophecies. That's right. Gave him that good news twice in a row. Whoop, whoop. While Hadrian was quaestor around 100 CE, Plautina took a liking to him, Plautina being Trajan's wife, well, who was a, who was an, a decently important character. Yeah. Seemed like a great lady. They shared a love of Greek culture and scholarship. And soon she put forth the idea that Hadrian should marry Trajan's grandniece, Vibia Sabina, who was around 18 at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Not even creepy. Oh, no. Not creepy at all. They they were of an age. Trajan seems to have not been a huge fan of this. Oh. But uh, it's kind of unclear why. Uh, But he was convinced, and the two were soon married. Hadrian did a lot while Trajan was emperor. He wrote and delivered speeches to the Senate on Trajan's behalf. Uh, early on, he was actually mocked for his thick accent openly on the Senate floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, learn how to talk, nerd. He's bullied in his childhood. <laughs> it's important. Gets bullied on the Senate floor. It's rough. Yeah. Rough out here. Uh, this did push him, though, to practice his Latin diligently there until his accent was hardly noticeable. Uh, he then became the official record keeper for the Senate. Oh. Another important Seems role. important. Yeah. But yeah. When the first Dacian War kicked off, Hadrian joined Trajan in the field. Mm. as one might expect, as part of his imperial entourage, and soon his drinking buddy. Oh, what a good spot to be if you're trying to be the heir. Something we didn't cover too much, just mentioned briefly, was that Trajan was known to be a, a heavy drinker, but mm. he just like kept it in line. He never oh, got okay. out of control, but he, was he just really a liked to drink. very avid casual drinker. Uh, yeah, or a very <laughs> uh, uh, functioning, high-functioning alcoholic. I Might don't have know. Been another if it's not negatively it. affecting your life, are you even an alcoholic? Well, you I don't think this is the time or the place for that discussion. But uh Trajan liked to drink and Hadrian joined him in that mm-hmm. while they were on campaign, which again put him in a good position with the emperor. Shortly into the war, he returned to Rome to fill the role of tribune of the plebs. This is another rung up. So clearly he's still trying to just climb those ranks. He's still unsure if he's going to be emperor or if he should just try to be the best politician he can be. Well, I guess one would lead to the other in most cases. Well, there's or only could. well, there's no real like um you don't need to be in the Senate to become an emperor. Right. No, I'm just saying that would help. Oh yeah. It and if it and if it didn't pan out, then he'd have a career. Right. That, yeah. That was working for him. A few years later, Trajan was back at it with the Second Dacian War. Hadrian joined him once again and was quickly sent away to lower to a uh, words a few years later trajan was back at it with the second dacian war hadrian joined him once again but was quickly relocated to be the legate of a legion in lower pannonia in 107 ce about halfway through trajan's reign this would be the equivalent of a modern high-ranking general and he was made governor of this region so this was a big role for him he was in charge he was tasked with quote Holding back the Sarmatians. Also a big deal. Yes. This was a tribe who was causing lots of problems and will continue to cause problems for a long time Mm -hmm. to come. Over the next year, Hadrian held back barbarian incursion and eventually won. A uh, a peace treaty was signed, though we don't know exactly what it said. Just that Some land may have been treated. Yeah. Something was settled and it was over. And Mm -hmm. Hadrian had something to do with it. Perfect. The Historia Augusta tells us that Hadrian's actions in the Dacian Wars and his defense of his province earned him great admiration from Trajan. The emperor gifted him a ring with a large diamond on it around this time. Nice. Nerva had given Trajan this signet ring, which was clearly a sign of his, as his placement mm-hmm. as heir. Mm-hmm. So surely this was a sign that Hadrian was the heir, right? I mean, I don't, do you say it? I don't know. No oh, official no. declaration came. Assuming is dangerous. But still he hoped. Yeah, well, you can hope. Yep. In 108 CE, he was made consul for his solid work, both awesome. militarily and in government. Well done, Hadrian. He continued showing his skills. Plautina and Trajan both continued to love him dearly. Good. Even if it still wasn't clear if he was going to be heir. He and his wife, however, did not get along at 
all. That's unfortunate. Maybe, perhaps, maybe Trajan knew. Maybe yeah, perhaps he was he right. He was like, nah, it's not going to work. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't think this is the one. I don't think Dang. this is the one. Uh, the marriage could be said to be probably the least successful portion of Hadrian's life. <laughs> it was not good. But still, he pushed forward until he was finally adopted by Trajan, maybe. We don't know. <laughs> by <laughs> Source maybe, is different. Maybe. <laughs> uh, Trajan, right. like I said, had been his guardian. Mm -hmm. But if this happened around this time, he was more officially adopted as a son. Right. Not clear, though. Uh, still did not mean he was heir. Because okay. oldest son, for the last uh, little bit, has not meant anything. Right. It was just whoever was declared. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or adopted. Yeah. Which I guess he was adopted, so we'll, we'll see. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe. We don't know. Maybe we're doing an episode <laughs> on someone who doesn't become emperor. I don't know. <laughs> Fortunately, Hadrian had passions other than becoming emperor. In his mid-30s and in a lull between wars, Hadrian went to Greece. Here, he gained Athenian citizenship. Oh, damn. Yeah. It was a big deal for him. He also served a short term as the eponymous archon of Athens in 112 CE. Uh, this would be like a chief magistrate. Huh. So an important role in Good an ancient city. Yeah, probably probably better than being emperor for him. Yeah, really, his childhood obsession. Yeah. He goes there and they're like, oh, hey, be an important person for us. Uh, can you just be in charge of us? Yeah, it'd be great. Please, thanks. The Athenians loved him so much that they erected a statue with an inscription of his cursus honorum up to that point. So wow. that's how we know some of the jobs mm -hmm. he had had, because we have this uh, statue. Then the war horn sounded yet again. Mm. Parthia had made the mistake of placing a king on the Armenian throne without Trajan's That's permission. Right. You didn't let us sign off on it. Yep. Hadrian left his beloved Greece and headed east. Hadrian was made legate and then governor of Syria when the current governor was sent off to Dacia. So Syria obviously being very close mm -hmm. to where the fighting is going on with the Parthians in the east. Over the next few years, Hadrian helped his adoptive father run the war that won them several new provinces. Remember, uh, Trajan's whole thing was expansion. That's right, and he did it. He did it real good. By 117 CE, the war was going fairly well. There was a stirring of Jewish revolt going on, mm -hmm. but the war with the Parthians was approaching a conclusion. And then Trajan felt very, very ill. <gasps> it dun, became... Dun, dun. Oh, I should have said spoiler, sorry. <laughs> it became clear the emperor was going to die soon. He and Plotina tried to get back to Rome to ensure a peaceful mm -hmm. transition of power. And this is where the stories get confused. Okay. Either Hadrian had already been adopted and was set up as the heir. Okay. Or Hadrian had been adopted, but not formally made heir. Or oh boy. Hadrian had not been adopted. Right. And the crazy story of Plotina hiring an actor mm. to portray Trajan's voice through a door happened which Declaring is what we decided is the truth right last right. time it sounds the coolest it certainly does so trajan dies on his way back to rome mm -hmm. plotina keeps it a secret gets someone to sign off on some things put things in motion to officially adopt hadrian and then declare him heir someone's like hey emperor is this true and he's like <coughs> yeah through yeah, a door yeah, yeah, sure. yeah yeah that's it he's, he's there yeah it's like i don't remember your voice sounding so deep sir so, <coughs> what do you mean I'm my sick. voice isn't deep at all <laughs> and they're like okay good enough for us and then Hadrian became the emperor because then she was like, oh, by the way, Trajan's dead. Glad he made the heir. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So what that's the story. Timing. Yeah. It was just worked out really well. Mm -hmm. The Historia Augusta claims that Trajan never intended Hadrian to be the heir. Well, then I guess he never declared a single heir and didn't have any idea who was going to follow him. Right. Or the Historia Augusta is full of crap. But we Maybe. don't know. Yeah. So we're going to go with the fun story. Whatever the truth, Hadrian found himself in a precarious position. Mm -hmm. He was still in Syria near where the fighting was happening with both the Parthians and now the Jews, which mm -hmm. was becoming a very massive revolt. Trajan had died on the road back, to, road back to Rome, and a power vacuum was a real possibility, even if Hadrian had been formally declared heir. Even if that whole story was wrong, Hadrian's in a bad spot right. to, to assume power. To offset this, Hadrian wrote to the Senate, quote, The unseemly haste of the troops in acclaiming me emperor was due to the belief that the state could not be without an emperor. Mm. Which was like, hey, I'm emperor now. Troops said so, but it was kind of necessary to make sure there wasn't a power vacuum. Right. Regardless of heirs, Trajan, mm -hmm, anything, mm -hmm. this was important and this is how it's going to be. And they couldn't really argue with that. I don't know if they would either. I mean, no. I feel like they would at least not dislike him. They probably thought okay most of, of Trajan's him. followers didn't like Hadrian. Is something we will see. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. So probably because they suspected he was going to become emperor. 
and didn't like him. Dumb. So that's where that's where he finds himself. Trajan's soldiers had obviously sided with Hadrian because he had been with them alongside right. Trajan the for war. so long, mm-hmm. and it was basically his son. So who else are you going to turn to? Plus, Hadrian's still there mm-hmm. with the troops. Right. Fortunately, as well, Trajan was able to pay the usual bribe to keep himself safe from the army. Now, Hadrian, like Trajan, did not immediately head to Rome. There was too much going on in the East to just get out of there. The Parthian War was still wrapping up, and that big Jewish revolt in Cyrene, Cyprus, Mesopotamia, and Egypt was still raging, though that was coming to a conclusion as well. A man named Lucius Quietus had been appointed by Trajan as governor of Judea to help put down that revolt. Well, we discussed him briefly. He spent several years putting down the rebellion, and because he did so well and because of the further implications that come from it, the war is actually named after him, the Quitos War. Oh, okay. Yep. So thank goodness we have a strong, excellent general leading the armies of the East, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> Quietus was soon stripped of his command. Well... Uh, his bodyguards were removed, and he was sent packing. Okay. Pretty quick into Third. Hadrian becoming power. Wait, now, did Hadrian do that? Yeah. Oh, he was like, hey, good job. Well done. Go away. Get out of here. Go. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Time to go home. Yeah. Now, you remember I said Trajan and another man had informally adopted Hadrian when he was young. Yeah. Okay. That man was Atianus. Atianus. I'm going to mm-hmm. go with Atianus. Uh, and he was Trajan's Praetorian prefect okay. near the end of Trajan's reign, which means he is still the prefect mm-hmm. when Hadrian becomes the emperor. And it makes sense. He's also kind of like a father figure. Mm-hmm. So sure, mm-hmm. you can stay as my Praetorian prefect. But he, Atianus had just uncovered a plot. No less than four high-ranking former consuls had been implicated in in this planned usurpation. Oh, man. Yeah. In no time at all, mock trials were held. Mm -hmm. The accused were not present for their own defense when they were found guilty. Well. (laughs) They were quickly hunted down and slaughtered. Right. This became known as the affair of the four consuls. Well, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. (laughs) One of these powerful men, take a guess who he was. I don't know. Quietus. Oh, the, yeah, the general. That the he was general. Like, hey, listen, good <laughs> job, leave. Sent away. Right, right, yep. right, right. Now, Hadrian claimed that this was all Atianus is doing. The emperor knew nothing of this savagery. Right. Clean Never. hands. Nor would he. You know, yeah. and one would think, okay, so now we'll punish Atianus for this. You know, this was unacceptable. Well, I don't know. It kind of seemed like he was trying to help the emperor out. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, well, you know, maybe Hadrian felt the same way because instead of, yeah, you know, yeah killing him or imprisoning him, Atianus was sent off with a pension. He was retired. Why don't you, why don't you just get out of court life? That seems, that out, seems out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Yeah. And then Hadrian promised the Senate that they would forevermore be allowed to try and punish their own members. Oh. This was an ancient right. Only senators should be passing judgment on senators. Okay. So basically, Fair kill enough. off the competition, mm-hmm. then promise never to kill off anyone. Right. Promise. It's good. Yeah, I like that. Yep. So that kind of worked, but public pressure was still strong, and people obviously thought he was involved. And so he swore a public why. oath that oh. he was not involved. He just he just said it to the people. Yep. No, no, listen, guys. Uh, no, for real, though. I swear I it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Now, these men, you have to believe me now. as one would suspect, were Trajan's close allies and friends mm-hmm. who didn't like Hadrian. Okay. Their proximity to Trajan and participation in his wars definitely gave them a great deal of power. Power, which could have been used to overthrow Hadrian, a man that they didn't like. Yeah. So all this kind of makes sense. And uh, while it is a bit tyrannical, securing power is difficult sometimes. Sometimes. You got to do what you got to do. Now we just got to see if he turns into a Domitian or not. Well, that'll be fun. Hadrian did need men about him that he could trust. Mm -hmm. In steps Turbo. What? Marcius what? Turbo. That's not real. <laughs> was a naval commander under Trajan. His name's Turbo? Marcius Come Turbo. Come on. Uh, honestly, there, I could have just omitted Turbo from the script, but his name's but why Turbo. Why would you do that? Yeah. I got to talk about him a no. little bit. Uh, he was a naval commander. His fleet helped in the Parthian campaign quite a bit, supply mm-hmm. lines and all that. When the Jewish revolt kicked off, Turbo was sent to Egypt to put down that portion of the uprising, because obviously it was very widespread. This was a high honor, as Mm -hmm. the grain supply from Egypt was the most important asset in the empire. Food. 
He did sense. well in this and was appointed governor of Egypt after the war to help get things rolling again. This was by Hadrian at this point. Unlike many of Trajan's followers, Turbo and Hadrian got along very well. Good for them. So, with the Jewish revolt put down, a solid man in charge of the East, and those pesky former consuls all dead, right. Hadrian began his slow journey to Rome. He had visited Trajan's body and witnessed the cremation. Obviously, mm-hmm. they didn't mm-hmm. make it back to Rome, so they did it where they were. Trajan's ashes were then sent ahead to be buried at the base of Trajan's column. Nice. Uh, this was actually pretty exceptional because bodies were not allowed to be buried in the city oh, for a well, long I mean, time. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes though. sense. Yeah. So he was one of the first ever. It was just his ashes, though, yeah. Yeah. So. Most people were cremated, but yeah. still, it's a high honor. As Hadrian passed through the Danube region, he settled some sort of military crisis. I could not find <laughs> what it actually was, but he did some something good stuff. Something happened, he did something about it, and it turned out well. Well done. All right. Along with this, he gave up the territories that Trajan had won in 102 CE during the First Dacian War. That doesn't seem great. And so the fears of Trajan's followers were coming true. Yeah. Hadrian was willing and able mm-hmm. to give up what Trajan had gained for the empire. Yeah, it's not a good look. Hope it's not a trend. It's not a good look at all. I know the Roman people are all about. No, we're big and powerful. Bigger, we more power. Get the things. We don't give the things. Why would we give things to someone? No. When we could take more things. Ridiculous. But Hadrian arrived back in Rome around 118 CE, almost a year after becoming emperor, similar to Trajan. Mm-hmm. He had been away from the Eternal City for many years, as had Trajan. They'd both been off campaigning for a long time. The city was certainly not in ruins, but it was in need of a fresh coat of paint. Hadrian set about ordering building projects. He fixed up many existing temples and public buildings, but he also began many new projects. The most important building started at this time was the rebuilding of Agrippa's Pantheon. There we go. Uh, Agrippa had built it under the reign of Augustus. Mm -hmm. Then it had burned down and been rebuilt during Domitian's reign and then burned down (laughs) about eight years earlier under Trajan. (laughs) It's like, stop making maybe, it out of wood. Yeah, maybe, uh, or just like, just let that one go. Nah, I don't just, know. Nah, it's nah, a nah. sign. <laughs> Hadrian was sure that this time it would stick. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, cool, cool, cool. So Hadrian spent the next few years consolidating his position in the capital. Building projects were ordered and overseen. He expanded Trajan's program of feeding orphans. Remember Plotina, his wife, had mm-hmm. set up this wonderful orphan yeah. feeding program. Yeah, he, yeah, he expanded yeah. that to include more territory. Well, that's good. He put on lavish games for his birthday and to celebrate Plotina and his mother-in-law. He was very good about caring for those he loved. Uh, he also banged many women <laughs> while seeming to ha- <laughs> prefer the comforts of men. Thank you, Historia Augusta. Interesting. Yes. He also didn't much care for banging his own wife. Well. He and Sabina still did not get along and seemed they never would. Certainly, there were no children to speak of. Ah. Uh. Unfortunate. Yeah. Still, things were going pretty well for the empire. Peace in the east was restored. The Jewish revolt was now in the rearview mirror, and the Parthian campaign was completely settled. It was at this time that Hadrian decided to relinquish imperial control over Armenia and the other eastern territories conquered by Trajan. What? This man just like ah. How do you think that went? We don't need it. terrible. It went over poorly. Yeah. The nation, all the traders, all the supporters are like, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop! Tarnishing the name! Many were furious. Particularly those who had fought for years to right. take those lands. These were yeah. the veterans who were now retiring. Yeah, and no, like, it's like, we fought for nothing. We did right. all of that. Just for nothing? For nothing. It was a risky play, but mm-hmm. helped show how solid Hadrian's control was by this time, as there were no major repriv- reprisals for this move. And Hadrian stated he had a good reason for why he'd done this. Augustus had expanded the empire more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. He had also told Tiberius to remain within the natural borders of three major rivers, which were the rivers he had pushed up to. He said no more expansion. Ah. These rivers were the Rhine, the Danube, Mm -hmm. and the Euphrates. Well, when we crossed the Rhine, we lost legions. Remember way back when? when, uh, Yeah. Uh, oh no, is it Varus? Don't know. I think names. it was Varus <laughs> when Augustus was walking around as an old man going, mm-hmm. Give me back my legions. Yeah. Yep, they crossed yep. the Rhine. Don't do that. Um, the Danube, that's where Domitian was fighting, mm-hmm. where Trajan had then pushed across and conquered. The Euphrates divides the Roman world from the Parthian world. Mm-hmm. These made sense, and they were easily defensible positions, great natural borders for a massive empire. 
Trajan had pushed past them, and now Hadrian was simply returning to the status quo of the last 100-plus years. Right. No, yeah, I mean, it's not a bad move. But just not a popular one. you think one. about it, but yeah, it's very unpopular. Yep. Because the mass public don't think big enough, usually, anyways. That, and at this point, conquering more wasn't really beneficial. No, you don't want to be too big, either. You right. You've got too much to handle. Which, arguably, they might already have. It's right. hard to maintain the borders that they currently mm-hmm. have. All that settled in the first three years of his reign. Hadrian had a realization. He needed to see his empire. He was sitting in Rome for years now. Mm-hmm. But he had been traveling for the military his whole life, essentially. And he's like, I need to see what's going on. Hands on. Touch everything. Time to go on tour, baby. Hadrian on tour. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So in 121, he prepared a trip to Britannia. Oh, hey. I know where this is going. Let's go. (laughs) Hadrian meandered his way north from Italy through Gaul up along the Rhine. Everywhere he went, he inspected troops and ensured their discipline was up to par. Mm -hmm. A quote from the Historia Augusta. In Germany, while he was eager for peace rather than for war, he trained the soldiers as if war were imminent, instilling into them the lessons of his own endurance. He encouraged others by the example of his own good qualities, too. He would talk as, or excuse me, that should be walk. He would walk as much as 20 miles in armor. Frequently, Ooh. he would wear the humblest clothing. He would visit six soldiers in their quarters and would choose the site for camp himself. So a hands-on man oh, yeah. getting deep with the soldiers, even though they're at peace, to ensure they're ready. ready. Great thing. He also checked in on all the provincial towns. There he would assist, assist with building works, funding new projects, and ensure their local government was running smoothly. Replace corrupt officials, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. oversee court. Great stuff. Dang, people got to love this guy. Oh, yeah. He clearly had a different mindset than more traditional Romans mm-hmm. of the time. He saw the empire as a commonwealth. Right. Rather than a Italy ruling everything empire. Mm-hmm. He began treating the provinces the same as Italy was treated, like part of the family rather than a slave to the family. Important. Which that makes is sense. different. Very uh, different. Yeah, I'm sure like the natural, all the natural Romans are like, you can't treat them as well as us. But I mean, that's just a good thing to do. Right, <laughs> especially at this point where mo, you know, been the, part the, of the, the conquered empire lands for so long have been involved with the empire yeah. for so long that they are just the empire. Yeah, like it does. It's there's not. No, there's no. They're reason. not provinces anymore, really. But most people didn't see it that way. Upon his arrival in Britannia, the place was having a hard time, as one might expect. Records are scarce, but some sort of rebellion had occurred a few years prior and left the place a little worse for wear. Hadrian also heard about the constant fighting along the northern border yeah. with the Caledonian tribes. Yeah. This would be people up in modern Scotland. This is the place Agricola had been conquering when mm-hmm, Domitian mm-hmm. had pulled a bunch of troops out to defend against the Dacians. It became clear to Hadrian that the cost of defense here was too great. It was a lot. With that in mind, he ordered the construction of a wall. There we go. The soldiers probably stopped for a moment and said, uh, um, a wall. Yeah. Uh, where would you like it, uh, your my emperor? Right. And he just kind of looks from the left to the <laughs> right. About here will do. But yeah, yeah, just is that way and that way as far as it can go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so just find a decently narrow spot of this island, build it across there, build a wall <laughs> all the way across. Yep. Then they probably just stared at him as he said goodbye and headed back for the mainland. Yeah. <laughs> just like, huh. All right. Oh, uh, we'll do that then. Yeah. And so Hadrian's Wall began construction, arguably the thing that he's known for because it's the thing with I his mean, name on yeah. it. <laughs> and probably one of the things he thought about the least in his rule. Probably he was just like, oh, you know what? It's hard to defend this place. You want know to make it easier? Just a wall. Put a wall up. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly enough, uh, the Historia Augusta is the only place that tells us that Hadrian ordered the building of this. We don't huh. have any other records to indicate that Saying he that did it. Saying that Hadrian actually ordered it? Yeah. So not only if he did it, did he probably never think about this wall again, but he might not have even ordered it. Right. And yet it's what most people know him for, well, which is very interesting. During his reign, at least. So, yeah. There you go. He never saw it completed. We know that because he, he left the island pretty sure, quickly it after. took a while. Yeah, yeah. And it took a few years. So when he got back, he uh, went through Gaul, obviously, modern France, and he built a basilica 
which is a very beautiful building, for Platina and all her patronage because mm. he loved her so much and she was basically the reason that he was emperor. Yeah. Uh, as it turned out, she had died shortly before. Tragedy. Yeah. So Hadrian had her deified. Oh. Well, I go. also probably didn't mention, what but nice move. Uh, Trajan was Trajan deified. Was deified. Yeah. Big time. That makes sense. <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, look at that. <laughs> Before he died, they're like, no, you're a god. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Let's start the cult now. Mm -hmm. It was also around this time of the journey that Hadrian dismissed his secretary. Oh. You will know who this man is. I said he did all of his writing during Hadrian's reign, and we were super sad when we didn't have him as a source anymore. Oh. This man is Suetonius. Dang. He was working for Hadrian at this time, and uh, why do you think he dismissed him? Wild guess. I, I don't know. He supported someone else. He wasn't writing good he things. He was supporting about someone. I don't, know. He, I, I don't know. He, uh, rumor had it that Suetonius had developed a, quote, excessive familiarity with the Empress. Well, the, well I mean, it's not like he was doing anything with her. <laughs> hey, Adrian, you're banging everybody. <laughs> yeah, like, why? like, come on, man. Let your wife have some fun. Yeah, for real. She's very unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, still, you can't have excessive familiarity with the Empress, so Suetonius was sent not. away to go write his histories. Yeah, just go, go write books somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Along with one of the Praetorian prefects who was also accused of sleeping no. with... The, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean... Yeah, not good. You blame her? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's probably just trying to stick it to him. Yeah. By uh, having him stick it to her. Hey, ah. is it? <laughs> All that sorted. Hadrian spent the winter of 122 and 23 in Spain. Okay. Which is probably lovely. He restored a temple of Augustus while there and nice. did his usual thing of inspecting troops and seeing to the administration of the region. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. After winter, Hadrian's entourage crossed the Mediterranean into Africa. So so if, you, if you're struggling to envision this, north, straight out of Italy, along Germany, yeah. to Britain, down through uh, France, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. into Spain, and now down into Africa, yeah. modern Morocco and stuff. Testing my uh, my uh, my uh, my geography. There it is. Now, while he was there, there was a local revolt taking place, and Hadrian personally took charge of this. Yeah, this would be in uh, Mauritania, I believe, was the region. So not he, in my empire. <laughs> Get out of here. That's right. Uh, he led his troops to put down the rebels, and at at his side was his trusty friend Turbo. God, Turbo. But then rumblings from the east came to them. <gasps> the Again? Parthians Come were on, preparing man. for war. Didn't. Well, Once he gave again. you stuff back. He just said, listen, this is the border. All right, just chill. It sure was nice, those 50 years that Nero gave us of peace with the yeah, Parthians. Yeah, for real. Hadrian gave command of the troops in Mauritania, the province that I was mentioning, to Turbo, and took a ship across the sea to the east. So now imagine on, on our line of him traveling mm-hmm. from northwest Africa, hops on a ship, Mediterranean, all the way back to the east where he was when he started. It's a big trip. Yeah. Yeah. So now I think he, do I say, I didn't say where he landed, probably somewhere around Syria. Uh, He rushed to the Euphrates River, the natural border between the empires, and there he met the Parthian king personally. Okay. And the two were able to come to an accord. Oh, good. War had been avoided. Good. Still, Hadrian spent some time along the border shoring up the defenses, as one would. Mm-hmm. As always, he saw to it that his men were drilled and disciplined. They needed to be ready for Parthian treachery. But this is a really good indication of what uh, Hadrian likes. Hadrian likes peace yeah, and preparation. Mm-hmm. And this was a wonderful example of diplomacy at work. Now, Nicomedia, which is a major city east of modern Istanbul had been hit by an earthquake shortly before uh, Hadrian's arrival as he moved back west. I could have worded that better. Per his usual behavior, Hadrian spent a great deal of money rebuilding that which had been destroyed. Mm -hmm. It may have been around this time that Hadrian met his beloved. He's already married. I don't know what you're talking about. The boy was likely 13 or 14 at the time. Come on now. Uh, Hadrian would have been in his mid to late 40s. That's a lot. Now... This is all speculation on when they met and when mm-hmm. they started having a relationship. Um, might have met him in a city of Claudiopolis. Claudiopolis, obviously. Which is, I only included the name because it's really fun <laughs> it's to cool say. Name, yeah. <laughs> obviously built for Claudius. Um, the boy may also have been a page sent to work in the imperial court. We don't mm-hmm. really know where he came from. Um, we'll say he was from Claudiopolis because that's around Greece and Hadrian loved everything Greek. That's true. 
The two did not immediately become lovers. That's we good. Think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, instead, Hadrian sent the boy off to Rome to learn court life, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. basically be a page. Right. Over the coming years, the two would grow very close, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, maybe like five or six years, hopefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I didn't include his name here. It'll be confusing later because I can't remember. And, and it's something. That's it's something. right. You'll just tell us the boy mm-hmm. that went to go be a page. Yep. So Hadrian continued moving around Anatolia throughout 123 CE. He set about the completion of a temple of Zeus, mm. which had been started back when the former kings still ruled the territory. That's a long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> this temple still exists today. Oh, my God. oh that's so cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hadrian built a lot of stuff that we still have. Uh, but after that winter, Hadrian headed to the place he most adored, Greece. Yes. Yes. Throughout the rest of 124 and 125, Hadrian toured Greece. A quote from the Historia Augusta, Here he undertook the Eleusian rites, following the example of Hercules and Philip. Wow. This was an ancient Greek ritual. Uh, religious ritual, which I had to stop myself diving into because there are too many rabbit holes in history research. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah. But uh, future emperors will also do this. Uh, the Illusion Mysteries is another term for it. So we'll, we'll hear about that again. But anyway, very big thing for him. He probably loved that. Yeah. The Athenians then begged him to revise their constitution. Oh, man. Which, which he gladly did. I bet. They also granted him citizenship, which might have been earlier... And it's just confused. Right. Yeah. Right. The thing. He goes to Greece a few times. It's about history. So it's all kind of messed up. Mm-hmm. Hadrian set up a pair of foundations to help fund the public games and festivals uh, in case the rich people were broke or didn't feel like it. How nice. Yeah. Now, remember the issues with the Greek politicians building stupid statues and wasting money basically oh, to impress yeah, people? Oh, yeah, The ones that are just trying to like could compete with each other does I have more money than you see this thing I made you should probably for select no me for counsel right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes yeah. yes so that had been going on now Hadrian arrived and politely asked them if they're gonna try to one up each other can you at least build some useful stuff yeah like do it for the people thank you maybe uh-huh. aqueducts there you instead go. of statues of you yeah yeah he also provided some funding for two water systems to solve some decades old problems. As always, he's just fixing everything. Mm-hmm. He even convinced an old Spartan ruling family to oh. enter the Senate. Oh. Which is big because Impressive. the representatives in Greece really still weren't big on being a part mm-hmm. of the Roman administration. Yeah, because they still wanted to be. They their would own rule thing. their space mm-hmm. and fine, we'll listen to the emperor. But. This would be more like, no, you should be in the Senate. Again, treating the provinces, quote unquote, right. as parts as of, part of Rome. a yeah. commonwealth. Exactly. Before returning to Rome in 125, Hadrian popped off to Sicily. You will be shocked to learn that he helped restore many buildings and inspected the administration thoroughly. Can't imagine. Yep. Finally, after three years of travels, Hadrian returned to the Eternal City to see the completion of the Pantheon in 126 CE. Nice. What a trip. Yeah. Yeah. It was also around this time that his new palace was completed, so he settled in. Yeah, I would. Yep. Dang, three years of traveling, fixing everything, yeah. commanding armies. All right, time to rest. Not for Hadrian. In 127 CE, he set out on a tour around Italy. My God, Much, much smaller this time. Well, yeah. <laughs> but he did his usual stuff. But most importantly, he divided Italy into four territories, Ooh. each with its own governor. governor? Yeah. This might okay. sound not so bad. It sounds like you're impressed. No, well, n- no. It sounds. It sounds like logistically, that sounds like a good idea. Politically, it sounds like suicide. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it makes perfect sense if you have this idea of a commonwealth and administration yeah. and like blah blah blah. But the Italians were like, "What are we? Mm-hmm. Provinces? Not happy about it. Oh my God. At all. They Hate threw off." Fit. Hate this it. did I will just spoil this. It did not last beyond yeah. him. He was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, nope. And it is around this time that Hadrian fell ill. <gasps> no, he got sick. Yeah. But no time to worry about that. In 128 CE, Hadrian set off once again for Sicily and Sorry. Africa. No rest for the wicked. Or the sicked. That's <laughs> wow, you did it. <laughs> yep. Once there, he ensured order was maintained and gave a rousing speech to the troops. Wow, sick, huh? Yep. I, I I have a feeling he's getting better. Yeah. But what we will see is that in his later years, he's just sick. Oh, he's, he's just not well. He's Ill. not a well man. <laughs> Gets a little grumpy. Yeah, well, I would too. Yeah. 
Uh, he main, he found he ensured that order was maintained. Parts of his speech actually still exist on an inscription. That's really cool. I love that stuff. I want. There's so many things that I'm learning still exist, and I want to mm-hmm. go see them. Bah, bah, bah. And with that, he decided to cut it short this time and head home. No three-year journey around the empire this time. Just a quick through Sicily around Africa and back. Just a few because he didn't months. finish going through Africa. Oh, that's right. He had to leave real quick. Real quick. The east started brewing. Yep. Whew. Glad we can finally relax in that newly built villa. Never. And spend time with his beloved Antonius. That's, That's his, his name. That's his name. We or, got an, it. No, no, no. Oh. Antinus. 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 Sorry. That is that is him. So they are now lovers. At, maybe. We'll say they are. <laughs> Instead, now lovers, maybe. But no. Instead, he sets off on trip number three. Here we go. Unless you count the Italian trip, then this is trip number four. But I don't count the Italian trip. Right. That was, that was too local. Yeah. Too local. This time, he's heading east first. And naturally, where do you begin if you go east of Italy? Tell me. Greece. There you go. <laughs> oh, no, Jordan. <laughs> Geography, not your strong suit. No. No. <laughs> Correct. Uh, here, he set up a council called the Panhellenian. Panhellenian, which, again, a uh, little bit confused. It might have been one of the other trips, but this is where I'm saying <laughs> it happened. Okay. This was an attempt to unite the Greek cities mm-hmm. as kind of a coalition of their own. Um, in practice, it became more of a religious c- country club. Interesting. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Also did not last long after Hadrian's death, but you can't right. fault him for trying. So Antinus and Hadrian then meandered their way from Greece down to Egypt. Along the way, he decided to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. Oh, cool. Yeah. Which had been mostly destroyed years earlier yep. during the wars. <laughs> And he was going to call it Aelia Capitolonia. And the Jews were not happy yeah, about this no, no, no. at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's Jerusalem. But we'll worry about that later. Well, I'm sure the Jews will worry about that later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they will. In 130 CE, uh, the party arrived in Egypt. And there they restored the tomb of Pompey the Great. Oh, okay. Uh, you'll remember that he had been killed in Egypt while mm-hmm. fleeing Caesar. That's right. And Caesar was very upset about that. So he built a tomb to him. Pompey was known for his efforts to bring the East under Roman control. So this move of restoring his tomb might have been an attempt to remind the Egyptians who was in charge. Remember, mm, not too yeah. long ago, decade ago, they had risen up with the Jews yep, and it had been a lost. big problem. Yeah, they had lost. Egypt had been, oh, I just said that. The two lovers then hosted a lion hunt. Oh, which back is what to you the do. Hunting. Yeah, I, I assume he's hunting the Probably. whole time. Yeah, I everywhere. Imagine. I mean, you're out traveling. I mean, if Trajan had to yell at you for hunting and then your emperor, you're hunting. You're hunting. Yeah. It, he, his travels, we think, oh, he's a great administrator and everything. Truth, he just wanted to go hunting and didn't want Probably the senators just yelling to at him. Hunt around the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. No, 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 no. I'm doing things. This <laughs> is just me doing what I love while working. Right. Mm. You know, nothing uh, says love with a teenage boy better than killing a lion. I would agree. Yeah. So next, the entourage took a tour down the Nile River. Oh, here we go. Quote from the Historia Augusta. During a journey on the Nile, he lost Antinus. <gasps> no! His favorite. So that's who was drowning. Oh, it was and on for, a pleasure barge? Yeah. This dumb kid couldn't swim? Yeah. And... For his youth, he wept like a woman. I, okay. Well. Concerning this incident, there are varying rumors. For some claim that he had devoted himself to death for Hadrian. So maybe suicide. Oh. And others, what both his beauty and Hadrian's sensuality... That doesn't make sense. Whatever the result, Hadrian <laughs> deified his young Ooh, lover. Well, that's probably not going to go great. And declared that oracles were given through his agency. But these, it is commonly asserted, were composed by Hadrian himself. Hmm. So he wrote some like beautiful mm-hmm. things about him and then yeah. said, you are a god. Yeah. Yeah. People loved it. Oh, really? Particularly in the East. Yes. The, huh. I mean, you know, the, the homoerotic love was definitely more popular in the East. Yeah. And um, he was a lovely young lad, apparently. And for about the next hundred years, the cult of Antinus is a pretty popular cult. <laughs> In the next hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There's still people waiting for Nero to come back. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, he came back once. Yeah. He, gonna, <laughs> he came back he a few times, go actually. <laughs> we just haven't covered them all. <laughs> uh, so poor Antinus died in the Nile. I probably could have revealed it better, but we'll, we'll get better at the story That's reveals. Okay. A city was built in his name. His body city. might have been buried there. 
but one inscription we found implies that he was buried at Hadrian's Villa, all the mm-hmm. way back near Rome. His deification was not all around popular. Um, however, the cult that I mentioned did spring up, and it was pretty good PR for Hadrian. I guess. And yeah. also, something I wanted to mention, uh, it got lost in the way I worded it, but uh, the part where he accused Hadrian of weeping like a woman. Right. <laughs> Gotta love the misogyny yeah, of the I Romans. Was like, huh, well... <laughs> That's not very nice. Right. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, no time to worry about that anymore uh, because the second Jewish-Roman war is about to kick off. Woo! Woo Woohoo! It's not entirely clear where Hadrian was for the next couple of years. Uh, He likely returned to Greece for a while in 131 to oversee the Temple of Zeus being completed and that Greek council. And Uh, born. Yeah. Um, But then he was pulled back to Judea. Because the Jewish mm-hmm. population was not happy. Really, really mad. Real upset about some stuff. For a long time, Romans had integrated various religions to fit their pantheon. Mm-hmm. Okay, We have conquered you. Uh, you have your own gods. Let's Time join them with ours. Assimilate. And we, will, we can all be happy. You can worship your gods. You can have some of ours. We can worship yours. It's great. Pantheon's what a strange are easy. way to do religion. It is. And it's, yeah. it's an important <laughs> thing to understand about why the Romans didn't like the Jews and then the yeah. Christians. Yeah, yeah, Because genuinely, they were a problem for the way everyone else did religion. Yeah, they were like, no, we're not going to worship any of your fake gods. Mm-hmm. We will talk more about this um, next episode, mm. about what the real issues were underlying Christianity and Judaism. Right. But the basics is the very foundation of monotheism, mm-hmm. Judaism, Christianity, That's is right. there's one God. Mm-hmm. Well, have you noticed how many emperors are gods? A lot. Most of them. <laughs> All of them so far. Oh, okay. Except <laughs> maybe not Domitian. I don't think Domitian was deified. Nope, because they had Damnation Memoria on him. So yeah, there's a few yeah. that haven't. <laughs> but um, most are. And every god is supposed to be revered. Or every god. Every emperor is supposed to be revered as a god. Mm-hmm. And false idols, all that, you can't do that right. in Judaism and Christianity. They have one god, right. and they were not going to give him up. Throughout history, there had been allowances for Judaism mm-hmm. because they were ancient. They mm-hmm. were mm-hmm. well-established. Um, but they still pissed the Romans off. That's right. You're not conforming. Why won't you conform? Now, one might expect that after uh, the problems that we have faced with the Jews over the last bit, the Quito's War, the first Jewish-Roman right, right. War, basically 50 years of problems, mm-hmm. then maybe we try and take it easy on them. No, you try to wipe them out. Right. Good, good. Yeah, now you're thinking. So when we rebuild Jerusalem, what if, hear me out, Hadrian said to the architects, what if we put a temple... To Jupiter, yes, on the Temple Mount, yes. Let's do that. Oh, can you that. feel the cringe? Let's really just crush them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So naturally, unrest began. Dang, I can't believe an architect was actually like, "Yeah, that's a good. I'll, I can do that." I'd be like, "No." Something to remember no. is the Jews had been expelled from Jerusalem, so I there know. weren't Jews there. I know, but yeah, you got to think like this is man, this is not going <laughs> to end holy well. Uh, what? Yeah. No, let's not. <laughs> now, uh, the Historia Augusta has another claim for why the Jews kicked off their revolt, and we'll quote here. At this time, too, the Jews set a war in motion because they were forbidden to mutilate their genitals. They were forbidden to circumcise, and they're like, yep. no! Which, uh, there may or may not have been a law created saying you can't circumcise under Hadrian. Yeah, I know there was stuff there have about been. it throughout history. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the only place I could find it was in the Historia Augusta. And the, what's really funny is that that sentence I just read mm-hmm. is like in the middle of a paragraph and then not elaborated upon. Just doesn't, no no pretext or post text, just. Yeah. So the, <laughs> the, the, the translator of my copy mm-hmm. puts a note like it looks like he just didn't want to talk about it anymore. Just threw it in there. Yeah, just that's it. So yeah, I love reading that book. It's really fun. Really good historical context. Yes. Uh, so we're going to look at this revolt in more detail during Mastery of Military Might. Uh, let's just say it was a long and bloody affair that took four years to conclude. Yeah. By 134 CE, Hadrian was getting old and tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'd spent nearly a decade traveling around the empire. Mm-hmm. With the conclusion of the Jewish war, he returned to Rome to enjoy his villa. Maybe. The war had left a very sour taste in his mouth. 
Uh, he claimed it had been a, quote, cruel and sudden disappointment to his aspirations for his United Empire. Yeah. Which makes sense mm-hmm. as a peace-loving guy. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about this more later, but this revolt genuinely took them off guard. They really did not see it coming, like anybody. It went like, bah, and there yeah, we were. It just exploded. Also, two years later, his wife Sabina died. Yeah. well... You know, yeah. Oh, let's let's weep in public. Oh, no, mm, the died. empress. Uh, so yeah. yeah. So the two had not liked each other, as we yeah. discussed. The Historia Augusta claims Hadrian would have gotten divorced due to her quote ill temper and irritability, <laughs> but he felt it would be wrong for an emperor to get a divorce, and it would look bad. So just sleep around a lot instead. When, just I guess. Tra- just don't be home. Yeah, Travel the world. I mean, that was don't good. Don't be home. <laughs> yeah, it was great for him. Uh, also, him calling her ill-tempered and irritable uh, is like the pot calling the kettle black. Because as we will Never. see, he was a bit of an ass <laughs> at, in his old age. Uh, very grumpy, but also very uh, unwell. The mutual dislike between the couple led to rumors after her death that Hadrian had poisoned her. <gasps> Yes. I don't think he'd do that. Yeah. Still, uh, as was in keeping with custom, she was deified yeah. soon after her yeah, death. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. This left a major issue. The same one Domitian and Nerva and Trajan had faced. <laughs> no heir. Who would be the next emperor? Ah, and Hadrian's ah. not well. Right. No children. Mm-hmm. So in 136 CE, Hadrian decided to adopt Lucius Sionius Commodus. Yeah, you're lucky I don't tell you the names of all of... It's a like, lot. There's so many. Names and the emperors have like eight complex. names. Complex, yeah, yeah. There's too many. Now, this man was ordinary consul that year, and it seemed like a solid fit. He was also the son-in-law to one of the men that had been executed at the beginning of Hadrian's reign. Well, I okay. <laughs> Maybe he was still trying to make it look like yeah. he hadn't been involved <laughs> in like, No, no, see? See this guy? Yeah. He, he knew him, see? Mm-hmm. So... He is adopted. He is named heir. And fortunately, he has a son. Oh, okay. Two years later, Hadrian was getting worse. Mm -hmm. His health was rapidly deteriorating. And thank God he had this whole succession thing figured out. No, he didn't. Then, in January of 138 (laughs) CE, Lucius Sionius Commodus died. Yeah, I don't know why I know he didn't. Because I don't know that name. Yeah, who is that guy? (laughs) I'm surprised. Well, some people uh, might have heard Commodus and gone, (gasps) oh. But you didn't, so no. Nope. So you don't know who that is. No. Nope. <laughs> All right. Well, He's I'm going to say the name Commodus a few times over the next couple episodes. All right. Just pay attention. It, well, eventually it'll make sense. Yeah. So shit, Hadrian probably thought to himself. Well, Time. What I was going to say. Didn't the guy that he adopted have a son though? His son is guy? like five. Start him early. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> nope. You will see precisely why that was not the plan in just a moment. So, Hadrian knew that his time was growing short. Mm-hmm. Uh, he set out a new line of succession. His ultimate goal, it would seem, was to have a bright young man named Marcus become emperor. Marcus. However, Marcus was still a teenager. Mm-hmm. Okay, older than Lucius's son. Right. But still a teenager. Still too young. They had learned their lesson with Nero. Well, yeah. Teenagers don't make good emperors. Nope. But... Marcus seemed very promising. So, a simple plan came to Hadrian. I will get a high-ranking senator, who is a bit older, to become my heir. On the condition that he will adopt Marcus Ah, as his heir. Yes, yes, yes. And so that's what he did. Because everyone knows that after you die, the people that made promises to you keep those promises. Precisely. Yes, everyone knows that. Wonderful. So, the high-ranking senator he chose, and for this one, just for fun, I did include his full name. <laughs> oh, God. Titus Aurelius Fulvus Boionius Arius Antoninus. Six. That's six six names. names. Oh, he's going to get a lot more. Oh, my gonna God. going to get a lot more of them. But we'll just call him Antoninus Pius. Oh, yeah. Because that is much easier. Yeah. The, uh, the condition of Antoninus becoming heir was simple, as I stated. He mm-hmm. had to adopt Marcus. Marcus. And... Commodus's son. Okay. The, the yeah, five yeah. or six year old. Yeah. Whose name was Lucius Sionius Commodus. Same as his father. Well, makes sense. Both would be Antoninus's heirs. Mm-hmm. Which is a couple people probably went, 
Well, but what does that mean? Kind of strange. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll figure that out later. I guess one of them will just die first. Yeah. Because so, <laughs> simple plan. Antoninus was around 51. He'll rule for a few years, maybe 10-ish. And the 16-year-old Marcus yep. can take over one after those 10 years. So he'd be mm-hmm. in his 20s. Mm-hmm. Easy peasy. And that's it. A couple months later, Hadrian died. <gasps> What do you think? Well, I'm, I don't know. I think he did a pretty good job. He did all right. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah. So let's get in. I realize that I still have some of my like as I write my scripts, I put notes at the bottom ah. so that I remember to do mm-hmm. things. And I got to that and went, "What is all this?" <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> but we're gonna get into our first round. Mastery of military might. Ooh. So Hadrian served three terms as a military tribune. Yeah. And that's very abnormal. Mm-hmm. Uh, most men of his status would have done one term, maybe two, and then moved up. But obviously it paid off for him in the end. Uh, he took part in several of Trajan's campaigns. He would have been a high-ranking officer leading the men, or at the very least, supply lines, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. administration of military affairs. And he did that for a long time, most of his young adulthood. Once emperor, he was noted for maintaining order and discipline with his troops. Wherever he went on his travels, he inspected the men and ensured they were up to standard. Yeah, He didn't draw too much condemnation for this because he also practiced discipline and mm-hmm. endured hardships. As we mentioned, he was the one planning where camp would go and stuff. Yeah. Cassius okay. Dio says, quote, he subjected the legions to the strictest discipline so that, though strong, they were neither insubordinate nor insolent. Good. Pretty good. He set firm boundaries on the empire to stop mm-hmm. further expansion and also to prevent incursion of barbarians which mm-hmm. we have been mm-hmm. seeing right and also it's the part issue on it's the border been, been yeah. a problem for a yeah. while i mean pretty much all of domitian's reign was spent right. fighting the barbarians yeah. and only once trajan stepped in and just killed everyone yeah. did it stop <laughs> well i mean that's one way to do it got a got a nice little buffer there thanks to trajan so that's a very wise move set them set yourself up defensively but now let's take a look at the greatest challenge he faced while in power the bar kukba revolt another thing <laughs> That I tried not to get too deep into because you Mm -hmm. can learn a lot if you want to dive into this. Now, we need to understand the history of the Jewish people in this Mm -hmm. area a little bit and like what's been going on in the empire to lead to this. So back in Nero's reign, the first Jewish revolt had kicked off. This is the war Vespasian and Titus were fighting when the year of the four Mm -hmm. emperors happened. Mm -hmm. Titus carried on the war while his father went off to Egypt and then Rome to become emperor. Mm -hmm. Titus took Jerusalem and destroyed three of its walls and tore down the temple itself. Mm -hmm. The Jews were then banned from entering the city, as we discussed. Mm -hmm. Bad times to be a Jewish person in this area. This was all in the late 60s and 70s CE, and we are ending uh, in like 138. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 60 years removed. Titus and Domitian took turns as emperor without much issue from the defeated Jewish population. Obviously, they'd been crushed pretty thoroughly, yeah. so we had about a generation where they didn't Needed do much. time to build. Mm-hmm. So we went through Titus and Domitian, but then near the end of Trajan's reign in 115 CE, uh, while many of the legions were off in the east fighting the Parthians, mm-hmm. the Jews of many provinces suddenly rose up. That's where Hadrian started. Um, this is the Quito's War. Yeah. And administrators and other officials had been killed en masse by the Jews. It was a very sudden uprising where a lot of troops Mm -hmm. were slaughtered, and so were just the average Romans. It was kind of genocide. Yeah. That's what they were going for. As we discussed, Trajan placed Lucius Quietus in charge of putting down the revolt, and he did a brutally fantastic job. (laughs) Brutally fantastic. According to Dio... 460,000 Romans were killed. That's a lot. A That's lot. a lot of people. Yeah. Remember, this was across like five provinces. Yeah. yeah. Um, probably exaggerated, but even if it's doubly exaggerated, that's an Still insane amount yeah. of people. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that was actually claiming to only be from two of the provinces. Cassius Dio says that was, yeah. So God. probably exaggerated. But either way, it wasn't good. It was very detrimental to the empire. Hadrian became emperor while this was wrapping up in 117, and then he kicked Quietus out and had the others killed with him. Uh, It is notable that this uprising did not take place in Judea, where Mm -hmm. the other ones had. Mm -hmm. This was Jews outside of the typical homeland who had risen up because the ones in Judea were still well and truly beaten down. Yeah. After this, Hadrian went on his travels and helped put down a few minor rebellions in the empire. 
Uh, during his final trip, as we discussed, Hadrian visited Judea and decided to build Jeru- rebuild Jerusalem. Rebuild it. Let's just really stick the finger to him hard here. Yep. Let's. Hey, Temple Mount, Temple of Jupiter. That's right. I like that. Let's do that. Um, and that pissed everyone off. One Jew who was really incensed was Simone Bar Kokhba, who goes by a lot of different names, and I might not be pronouncing that rightly. Um, he wanted freedom from the empire, mm-hmm. and particularly the governor of Judea. A man named Rufus, who had really pissed everyone off. Rufus, huh? Yeah. Rufus was not well liked by any of his subjects. <laughs> Bar Kokhba gathered the Jews willing to fight to his cause and then forced the rest to join him. Oh. It well, went from okay. join me to, okay, now I'm military dictator. Let's uh, go. Okay. Yeah. The uprising rose and quickly spread across Judea. Rufus was unable to contain it, likely because he didn't expect it. And he was very unliked, so no one would be trying to look out for him or anything. So. And, uh, yeah, that basically that, yes. Yeah. In 132 CE, uh, he disappears from the records. Rufus. Yeah. <laughs> he's, just, he's gone now. Either he died or got fired. Uh, let's go with well, died. Why not both? Yeah, fired, <laughs> and then as he's trying to leave, yeah. they, the Jews catch him. Right. Oh, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> Legions from around the region were called in to deal with the problem. Uh, there were an esti- uh, there were estimated to be around 20,000 troops in Judea within the first year of the uprising. So a lot of soldiers got marched in. However, the Jews put up a hell of a fight. Mm-hmm. They held out against the reinforcements, and it is possible that an entire legion was ambushed and wiped out by the Jews in these early oh, months. Damn. Yeah, it's not entirely clear. A lot of this is very messy, as one might expect. Yeah. Um, but they were soon able to establish an independent state. Ooh. Yep. Judea has broken free and is now run by essentially the king, Bar Kokhba. So a lot of the Jews naturally thought that Bar Kokhba was the Messiah. Well, yeah. It, it kind of makes yeah. sense. Rightfully this is, thinking so, I this suppose. This seems like yeah. the end times for sure. Uh, he obviously also became the leader of this new state, as mm-hmm. I mentioned. Uh, now, with several legions unable to handle this issue, Hadrian began pulling in legions from around the empire. This is when he went there personally. Yeah, like, all right, to I'll take care it. of it. Um, in 134 CE, he renewed a push into Judea. This wasn't Hadrian leading personally. He was older by this point. Mm-hmm. He, he was choosing generals. But he was like Domitian leading yeah. from the rear. You know, He was out there. It was also around this time that Hadrian's chosen general for this job arrived from Britannia. This is Sextus Julius Severus. Mm. So he was like, okay, we need someone good. How about the guy literally Who's at the been farthest end? Forever. Yeah. <laughs> and has and he's like across the empire. Yeah. Let's get him out here. <laughs> Eighty thousand troops marched in. Woo! Somewhere around ten legions. That's a lot of people. That's far more than Titus had yeah. during his war. Uh this number. Uh, was still somehow less than the rebels. Oh my god! Yeah, by this point, probably my assumption is I don't. Again, I tried not to look mm-hmm. too deep because it would take. I could have dived. Right. But I imagine by this point, many Jews from other regions were. Oh yeah, would just coming migrating. And, They're like, yeah, oh, an independent Jewish in state. Yeah. Hell yeah, I'm going there. Being outnumbered and having lost several battles the previous years, the Romans took a much slower approach. They methodically took each city one at a time. They weren't going to try and engage this massive army when they didn't have superior numbers or Mm -hmm. position. Right. Soon, the tide turned in favor of the Romans. Bar Kokhba retreated from fortified position to fortified position as the legions slowly advanced. And now, the war had turned from reconquest to annihilation. Yeah, they were like, nope, not happening again. No, many would consider what followed a genocide. I mean, yeah, Yeah. that was probably the plan. Mm -hmm. They're like, they keep rising up. Just keep Gotta causing put problems. Down. Gotta put them down. Yeah. Bar Kokhba fell back to the fortress of Batar and quickly found himself besieged. He may have killed his uncle for possibly working for the Romans at this time. Mm. Many claim this ended his divine protection, and that oh. is why the Romans won. Okay. Yeah. Killing okay. his uncle. Yeah. And when God Batar fell. not want you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. I hope you find yeah. your dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when Batar fell horrific massacre followed yeah hadrian was presented with the rebel leader's head then a systemic destruction of all the villages oh, commenced man. yeah those attempting to flee were hunted down and yeah. slaughtered yeah that's definitely genocide yeah dio claims that nearly six hundred thousand jews were massacred <gasps> 50 fortified towns and almost a thousand villages were burned to the ground that's a lot mm-hmm as was common those captured and not murdered were sold into slavery right yep 
The revolt was officially put down in 136 CE. Dio tells us that the death toll on the Roman side was so high that Hadrian was deeply bothered by it. Yeah. Quote. No, he, go ahead. I was going to say he felt bad about this whole thing. <laughs> He's like, damn, I just really wanted that Temple of Jupiter. <laughs> I <laughs> just really I thought it would look nice. Building, guys. <laughs> I've built so many temples to so many gods, I didn't think they'd be this <laughs> upset about it. Uh, quote from Dio. Many Romans, moreover, perished in this war. Therefore, Hadrian, in writing to the Senate, did not employ the opening phrase commonly affected by the emperors, if you and your children are in health, it is well, I and the army are in health, Mm. which is what they would normally say, emperor and the army are good. I'm not going to say that part today. This is bad. We're not good. It is speculated that following this war, there was a massive conscription effort to replenish the losses. Uh, It was the thing Hadrian had feared. Mm -hmm. He didn't like war. And felt it wasted in mo- it was a waste in most cases. And this, as I, mean, I said, yeah, was a surprise. Mm-hmm. And it really bothered him. So to sum all that up, to sum up his mastery of military might so we can give him a score. He was a military man throughout his early life. Mm-hmm. Most of his life until he was emperor, he was involved in the military. He did plenty of fighting and leading both his own men and under Trajan. As emperor, he personally saw to the defenses of the frontier and training and discipline of his men. He ordered a military strategy of defense, which was highly unpopular at the time, but was clearly very wise uh, with the lens of hindsight. Uh, He didn't lead from the front much in his reign. He was like Domitian leading from the back. But unlike Domitian, he was a lifelong veteran. So what do we give a man who really liked peace but did a damn fine job when he had to go to war? High score. I think so. Um, I'm thinking like in the seven or eight. I was going to give this man a nine. You're, you're thinking a nine? Yeah. Okay, okay. Hmm, do I go... I think if you're going to go nine, I'm going to go seven. Because I think 16 is solid for for someone in his do, position. Do, do you, boo-boo. All right. So I'm going to go with seven. You're going to go with nine. That is a 16... For mastery of military it's the biggest might. difference we've had so far, I think. Uh, it might be. I think yeah. we're usually just one point off. It might very well be. Terrible tyranny. Okay. He may have connived his way into the purple with the help of Plotina. Similarly, he may have already been the heir. And there may right. no, not have yeah. been anything bad <laughs> going on. Conflicting stories. Um, very likely, he was involved in the affair of the four consulars. Right. Yeah, so, you know, maybe his Praetorian prefect had those four men tried, quote-unquote, and executed, or yeah, or he sure. was involved. He gave them a fair chance. Yeah. I'm sure he did. Yeah. And so and I, just, I just have to put them down. And Hadrian didn't know about it, of course. <laughs> Hadrian didn't know anything was no going on. Uh, the Historia Augusta points to several more executions in his final months. Uh, this, If this did occur, it was likely a combination of Hadrian being very ill, and miserable, coupled with his desire for a smooth transition of power. Yeah, this man, near the end of his life, had to be just really upset about everything. Real, just not in a good way. I'm sick, w- I'm tired. We'll get there. <laughs> sucked. <laughs> we'll get there. He's not in a good way. Yeah. Uh, so he had several people executed, all accused of seeking the purple, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which obviously he did not want. Here is a quote on the two periods of executions coming from Cassius Dio. Hadrian, though he ruled with the greatest mildness was nevertheless severely criticized for slaying several of the best men in the beginning of his reign and again near the end of his life. And for this reason, he came near failing to be enrolled among the demigods, Mm. which we will discuss next week. Hmm. The Senate did not want to deify him. The Senate did did not like him. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it next. Oh, my god. We'll talk about it next time. Uh, the nice part about going six weeks, just kidding, we totally recorded this the following week, right. uh, is that I am well and truly into the next script, so I know a lot about what comes after this. But anyway, uh, the Historia Augusta also points out that once he became emperor, Hadrian sought no revenge against rivals from his previous life, which his his uh, brother-in-law bully is probably right. very grateful for. Mm-hmm. They don't name uh, say his name specifically, but I'm going to say this next line is about Servianus. Uh, quote, Men whom he had treated as his enemies when a private citizen, he merely ignored as emperor. So mm. that, after his accession, he said to Servianus, you have escaped. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> it yeah. didn't actually say Servianus' name, but I, I needed it to I'm be. I'm sure he was part of it. Yep. Dio tells us of one exception to this rule, Apollodorus. Mm. Uh, do you remember that name? Yeah. This was the guy 
uh, the main architect under Trajan, who built that big bridge yep. and a couple other yep. very impressive things. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, Apollodorus had grievously insulted Hadrian during oh. Trajan's rule. Well, So Hadrian found a pretext for banishment and oh, eventually okay. execution. Right. Yeah. 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 Naturally. Makes sense. Don't, don't insult him at a meeting, because he might be emperor one day. His actions in Judea helped push the Jews to their breaking point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Rebuilding Jerusalem, where the Jews were not allowed to be, and then placing a false god statue on their temple, uh, was an affront too far. Uh, This kicked off the Second Jewish Revolt, and likely over a million people died as a result. Right. Um, Hard to say how much of this was truly his fault, but obviously rebuilding Jerusalem and the Temple thing was a big yeah. Could catalyst. Have been a really innocent, extremely stupid mistake. Right. Um, the systemic annihilation of the survivors is <laughs> easily yeah. classifiable as genocide. Uh, yeah. 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 Something to bear in mind. Uh, this yeah. was different to the Holocaust. Correct. Uh, in in the main reason that this brutality was um, the result of seventy years of atrocities committed on both sides. Right. It was just. The conclusion to a lot of warring. Yeah, it wasn't. Hey, I need a and scapegoat. Not extinction. Let's because, slaughter yeah. these people because of what they believe. It was. Right. Wow, you guys are kind of annoying. Let's yeah. fight about it. Oh, that was really bad. Let's not do that for fifty years. Oh, we're doing this again. Oh, again? No, yeah. we're not doing this again. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what it was. Um, the Jews were just as ruthless as the Romans, mm-hmm. but genocide's genocide. Sure and the is. Romans won and committed genocide. And that would have been under Hadrian's orders. Mm -hmm. So we definitely need to consider that. It did help stabilize the empire, though. Um, It's also rumored that he poisoned his wife. Well, that's that's dumb. I'm not even gonna consider that one. She, they didn't like each other. Yeah, that does that. (laughs) So yeah, he refused to divorce her. Yeah. For his whole life. And he just openly slept with other people. He wasn't losing anything. Yeah. (laughs) You are probably correct. So terrible tyranny. Um. He had a few uh, extra judicial execu- uh, executions mm-hmm. and genocide. Right. What do we give for that? This, this is a tough one because otherwise, seems like a pretty good dude. Mm-hmm. Like overall, not abusing his power, not being terrible. Let's, I want to give him somewhere around a four or a five. Maybe, maybe a nice flat five. Nice flat five. Yeah, because he, because he, on the whole. Seemed like a good, sane, yeah. moral, prudent mm-hmm. ruler who did a few pretty questionable things right. to keep the stability of the empire. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll go with five. Five? That's fair. All right, bet. That genocide gave him a few points. It sure did. If it if it had just been the like affair of the consulars and killing some people when he was grumpy and dying, right. it would have been like a one or two. Yeah. I mean, Trajan got three total between mm-hmm. the two of us. All right. On to the next. Lives of the living. Uh, qu- a long quote. From the Historia Augusta. He was in one and the same person, both stern and cheerful, affable and harsh, impetuous and hesitant, mean and generous, <laughs> hypocritical and straightforward, cruel and merciful, and what? always in all things changeable. His friends were enriched, even those who did not ask him, while to those who did, did ask, he would refuse nothing. Yet this same man listened readily to whatever was whispered about his friends, and thus almost all, even the closest and even those whom he had raised to the highest honors, he regarded as being in the category of enemy. Which doesn't really sound like the person we've been talking about today, but that's what the Historia Augusta says about him. Most of those words, most of the descriptor words you said before you started saying sentences were contradictory. Each one of them was. <laughs> yeah. 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 What, how, what? Which shows you what the Historia Augusta is yeah. all about. <laughs> like this, Confusion. This man embodied every characteristic at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? So, let's look at some pros. By all accounts, he was a very able administrator and saw mm-hmm. to matters personally whenever possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, he traveled the empire. Fixing everything. He met his subjects, improved infrastructure and administration, fought corruption. Along the way, he built defensive fortifications along the most dangerous stretches of their borders. He ensured troops were all trained, as we've discussed, agnosium. The fact that the emperor could travel around for so many years attests to how smoothly things were running. He -hmm. didn't need to be home. He didn't need to rush places most of the time Mm -hmm. because it was going well. You can tell by the shock of the Jewish revolt that they felt very secure. Right. They're like, yeah, things are going great. Having a good time here. Not planning to defend inside the borders at all. Mm-hmm. They did not expect it. Um, we're still riding what many consider to be the golden age. Mm-hmm. We are still going up. Um, Hadrian's efforts certainly feel golden. Yeah. 
Uh, empires don't often update and rebuild their infrastructure en masse. Clearly, things are going quite well. Aside from the Jewish revolt, there was peace across the empire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. couple little uprising. You're yeah. always going to have that in ancient times. But a final quote on the positives here from Dio. Other traits for which people found fault with him were his great strictness, his curiosity, and his meddlesomeness. Yet he balanced and atoned for these defects by his careful oversight, his prudence, his munificence, and his skill. Furthermore, he did not stir up any war, and he terminated those already in progress. And he deprived no one of money unjustly, while upon many communities and private citizens, senators and knights, he bestowed large sums. So a very open-handed man. Um, Let's look at a couple cons. I have a very short list. The Senate didn't like him. Apparently. Um, Many felt Hadrian was a coward. Uh, they spent. They had spent years fighting under Trajan and couldn't see why Trajan's adopted son would abandon his gains and lead his people through an era of peace and prosperity. Ridiculous. Disgusting. Get him out of here. Or death. Um, also, if you were a Jew during his reign yeah. uh, or the last few reigns, yeah. things were not going well for you. Yeah. Um, two wars during Hadrian's reign and the slaughter and displacement that followed threw the Jewish people into chaos. And we'll talk more about that in Lasting Legacy as well. So, on the whole, uh, big points. Yeah. The Empire is going really yeah, well. For the common person, that was great. He's, he's settling disputes large and small in administration mm-hmm. circles, like in Greece. He's funding massive building works, aqueducts, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. seeing to everything personally. I, I don't know, man. You're, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a, a 10 anywhere else. I'm going to give him a 9. You're going to give him a 9? Yeah. Why, why, are you, why are you not going 10? The massive Jewish revolt broke out. Yeah, you said that projected the deaths of about four hundred sixty thousand Romans. True. Have we? Probably g- wasn't great for them. We gave Trajan a ten. Okay. I'm just no. I'm just saying. Like, and that was a, a period of a lot of warfare. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give him a ten. I think. I think if if Trajan deserves it, Hadrian certainly does. Well, maybe Trajan didn't deserve it. Maybe. I have decided. Oh, you know, perfect. <laughs> Great segue, Jordan. Great segue. So I forgot to mention this. Uh, two listeners have reached out. Oh. They may be friends, Never. but they have reached out. We don't have friends. To, to make a few requests. First, um, I was asked if I would consider making Terrible Tyranny a negative score. Oh. But, um, and I understood where this could come from, mm-hmm. so I just wanted to mm-hmm. clarify why it's not. To me, these points are, we're accomplishing two things with our show. Figuring out who's the great. Right. And figuring out who's most interesting. Yep. So, again, we'll go back to Hitler because he's the easy example of Mm -hmm. terrible tyranny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's going to get a 10 out of 10 easy points because that's what makes Hitler interesting. Yeah. Bad is still interesting. Really great living conditions for your people is also interesting. Yeah. So, so that's why we're not doing negative. And, uh, I will never repeal a score. Someone said, <laughs> I, I need never. you to get Jordan to change his 9.5 for <laughs> Caesar's never. military. So uh, I have decided that once we're done, we're going to do a review. Oh, we're going to go with, through with every, all of Roman. Once oh, okay. we're done with this all season, right. Right. we're going to go through everybody and we're going to do a quick recap and then we're going to allow for point changes. I'll consider it. And I also wanted to bring up that I was wondering because another thing that's interesting is how long they ruled. Mm. And that can add to the, like, oh, it that's interesting. A category? Yeah. So that's something to consider. We can also add that later because their mm-hmm. reigns don't change length. What? Yeah. Well, you're telling me history doesn't change. Anyway, all that aside, Lives of the Living, I'm giving him a 10. I think this is probably one of the best times to live in the empire. Uh, yeah. So. Unless you're, unless you're Jewish. Yep. And it sucked under Trajan to be Jewish, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll give it to him. Yeah. We'll let's go. Yeah. All I will right. Not change a score. And <laughs> nine point five is staying. <laughs> You're such a bad person. <laughs> All right. Whew. Two more rounds. Departing demise. So now we're gonna follow Dio's account of Hadrian's death. Okay. Okay. So we'll start off with this quote. He now began to be sick, Mm -hmm. for he had been subject even before this to a flow of blood from his nostrils, and at this time it became distinctly more copious. He therefore despaired of his life, and on this account appointed Lucius Commodus to be Caesar for the Romans, although this man frequently vomited blood. (laughs) (laughs) 
telling me this man's nose just started leaking and didn't stop. I was like, well, probably going to die soon. Hey, man, you, you're my heir. He, he, he wipes his bloody mouth <laughs> yeah. from as he gets up. Oh, great. Okay, yeah, sure, perfect. <laughs> There's a lot of blood leaving these bodies that's not yeah. supposed to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two men apparently took issue with Lucius' appointment and condemned the action. And naturally, these were two of the men executed well, uh, shortly before Hadrian's death. Yeah. <coughs> gotta, gotta take care of the, the dissenters. However, one of them shouted a curse at the ailing emperor <gasps> before his execution. Oh, no. A quote. That I am... <laughs> it's supposed right. to be guilty, not fealty. <laughs> that I am guilty of no wrong, ye, O gods, are well aware. As for Hadrian, this is my only prayer. That he may long for death but be unable to die. He'll die. He'll die soon. Oh, but he will long for it. Uh, <laughs> these words proved prophetic. Oh. <laughs> Dio tells us that Hadrian longed for death in his dying months. Apparently, there were uh, even existing letters from Hadrian about this very mindset. Oh. Uh, we don't have them. He just mentions them. Still, Hadrian carried on ruling despite his misery. Now, this is a long quote from Dio, but it's fun. Okay. Hadrian became consumptive as a result of his great blood loss, and this led to dropsy, swelling, fluids, and as it happened that Lucius Commodus was suddenly carried off by a severe hemorrhage, the emperor convened at his house the most prominent and most respected of the senators, and lying there upon his couch, he spoke to them as follows, I, my friends, have not been permitted by nature to have a son, but you have made it possible by legal enactment. Now, there is this difference between the two methods, that a begotten son turns out to be whatever sort of person heaven pleases, whereas one that is adopted a man takes to himself as the result of a deliberate selection. Mm -hmm. Adopting is probably better, is what he's saying. For this reason, I formally selected Lucius before all others, but since heaven has bereft us of him, I have found as emperor for you in this place the man whom I now give you, the one who is noble, Mild, tractable, prudent, neither young enough to do anything reckless, nor old enough to neglect aught, and is not ignorant of any matters pertaining to the imperial office, but can handle them all effectively. I refer to Antoninus here. What an intro. Yeah. Just like, real this hype guy. Man. Real hype man here. Yep. So then, Hadrian instructed Antoninus to adopt Commodus' son and Marcus, mm -hmm. as we saw. Yeah. With the succession sorted, Hadrian went back to begging people to put him out of his damn misery. Yeah, someone just kill me. <laughs> Will you please stab me? Tru treat me like Julius. Stab me a <laughs> lot. <laughs> he would often ask for swords or poison so he could just get it over with. <laughs> nah. They're like, no, no, my liege, no. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the imperial staff were like, we can't. We can't do that. Um, and we will see more next time that Antoninus actually was the one that convinced him, dude, you have to die naturally. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Just like you couldn't divorce your wife, oh, the you emperor go. can't commit suicide. That's, I guess that's fair enough in yep. terms of saving face. He still kept trying to threaten and offer bribes for a little bit. Like, just, just do it. Just do it. Bro, but eventually... I will all of these coins right here. <laughs> he, he buckled and was like, okay, I'm asking my barbarian hunting companion to stab me. <laughs> <laughs> he even marked out the spot my barbarian near his heart. Command. The man almost followed through, but then likely thought better of it. He's like, it's wait. It's probably not great to kill the emperor, even if he asked you to. Yeah. And he's like, I'll pardon you. It's like, yeah, but what about the next one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not good. Uh, he was tormented with the notion that he had the power of life and death over millions of people in his empire. Except himself. He just could not deal with his own mortal body. <laughs> Uh, eventually, he stopped eating and drinking. There you go. Causing his body to rapidly decline. That's one way to do it. Yep. Finally, after months or even years of misery, depending on when this illness really started, <laughs> Hadrian passed away. He had ruled almost as long as Tiberius, which was over 20 years, mm -hmm. and oversaw a mostly peaceful empire. Yeah. He was only 62. So imagine what could have been if he had lived for another 10, 15 years. He did a lot. He did a lot. He did a lot. He man. did. And, and if he had been well for the, the mm -hmm. end of it, because he was unwell for a good bit. So <laughs> it's a pretty interesting death. Is it? It's interesting if you make a story out of it. I mean, that's what I do. It's like, <laughs> yeah. how interesting are they? I mean, he. Yeah, but some of their okay. deaths are interesting without 
adding story. Well, but let's let's look at it. Let's just break it down quickly. Okay. Right. He realized he was dying. Yeah. A couple years before he's mm-hmm. actually dying. So he named someone his heir. Yeah. Who then dropped dead shortly before he was going to die. Right. When he was at his worst mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. So then he finds another person, sets about a wonderful line of succession, seeing as we're now three emperors deep of no sons. Mm-hmm. And wanted someone to kill him right just desperately which is kind of funny even it's though it's really funny. sad yeah no it's funny on Heinz, out here yeah um so yeah it's not the level of assassination but it is a good story i didn't need to embellish much sure i think i'm gonna go with seven i was thinking six that's fair because I was also like on the I was on the the fence on six or seven. Yeah, I'm gonna go with six. Then. Hell yeah! So it's that not, is a not thirteen. Uninteresting. Right. It's but it's not an assassination. Yeah, it's not right. you know dying in battle or anything. Yeah. All right. The last scoring round. Lasting legacy. Woo! Lasting legacy. Okay. Hadrian is one of the few names of the later emperors that the common public might recognize. Right. Uh, they won't know who he is. No, but they know about the wall. Maybe. Yeah, it's one of those like, oh, I've heard that. Uh, Correct. He built something. And then if you say the wall, yeah, Yeah. where is that? Adrian's wall. Uh, That's usually what it is. They are stupid. Uh, Like I said, this is funny considering it was such a small thing in his Damn. reign yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll notice that he we didn't mention it at all after he it. built yeah, no. after he ordered it built yeah. um he never saw it completed but uh still the remnants of the wall do exist today mm-hmm. uh and likely helped inspire the wall from the game of thrones series super cool yeah which also the great wall of china probably helped with that too but i'm sure as it as uh westeros is based on the uk and the wall is at the top like it is mm-hmm. yeah, i'm gonna go with that uh, one building that doesn't get recognized as Hadrian's work as often, but is far more famous, is the Pantheon. Yeah. Uh, the building was a reconstruction, as we said, but it has endured for nearly 2,000 years. Well, like three times over? Yes, <laughs> exactly. The first 100 years had to build it three times. Now we got it right. That, he, he, was got right. right. he was yeah. right. He was right. He's like, this is it. I got it. Um, so I've been there. It's awesome. Um, it has been a Christian church for a long time, mm-hmm. which is a bit contrary, given it's called the sure Pantheon. Is. Yep. But uh, a quick story that um, when I was visiting Rome, I didn't really have much knowledge Mm -hmm. of anything, really. I just liked Rome. Um, So learning now how many things exist in Rome that existed back then, I'm like, ah! But we had been walking and doing tours for days and were exhausted. And on Mm -hmm. our last day, we're like, okay, no tours. We'll relax in the hotel and then walk where we want to. Mm -hmm. And just stumbled upon the Pantheon. As you do. And I went, is that the Pantheon? (laughs) Because I didn't know it existed. <laughs> I didn't know it still stood. That's yeah. that's how little I knew. And it was free. You just doors you're, are open. You just, you just go, go in. in. That's yeah, cool. it was wonderful. One of the, it was it is the defining thing mm-hmm. out of my uh, time there. Um, next, Hadrian is one of the four or five good emperors. Mm. Um, he is remembered in that he he ruled during the peak of the Roman Golden Age. Yeah, he helped get us to the peak. In mm-hmm. fact. Um, his contemporaries may have been upset that he was less into war than Trajan, uh, but his doctrine of defense would be all that holds the empire together in the coming centuries. Yeah, they're just dumb. Yeah. They, they had a stupid notion of like, we have to expand because we're Rome. And he's like, blah, 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 hey, maybe we just get everything super stable, get a lot of money, you know. Just rule. Maybe. We, gotta, we own the world. Yeah, maybe we just kind of just sit in that for a while. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Uh, he is known as the traveling emperor, mm-hmm. obviously. Makes sense. It's yeah. a very interesting yeah, yeah. story there. Uh, he moved around the entirety of his empire throughout mm-hmm. his reign. Uh, very abnormal. Most emperors only traveled to fight, usually. Right. Otherwise, they just chilled where they were. Uh, Hadrian traveled for the love of it, as well as a strong desire to see his empire run well. He also has one of the longest reigns in Rome, Western Roman history, uh, sixth longest overall in the Western Empire from what I could see, but cool. that might not be entirely accurate, which is a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so also, I guess just in general, like I said, lots of buildings exist that Hadrian right. built. He did a lot of yeah. building. We have a lot yeah. of stuff mm-hmm. that he left behind. So what is, where do you rank his legacy then? Because I'm a bit, it's, it's difficult. I'm like, what? What do we give? Um, Thinking a solid standard medium high, like a seven. 
We have a lot of seven. Well, I guess we got two. We got two that we went with seven. Hmm. <laughs> Who are those? You think it's higher? Vespasian and Nero are sevens. No, I don't know that it is. We got the wall. We've got his his policy mm, of defense. Are you? Do you want to go seven? I want to go seven. Do I want to go seven I don't or know. eight? I mean, why don't you go eight? You walked in the Pantheon. I did walk in the Pantheon. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Okay. Eight and seven. So that is Seems like a 15. pretty good personal reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where did it go? I'm doing this all on a on a Surface Pro as a tablet this time, which is great. Right. But it's a little less convenient than a mouse and keyboard for typing things in. Yeah. So, wow. His score. It's going to be a good one because he has good, good scores and a little bit of tyranny in there. Yeah. So, well, okay. So Trajan got 72. Mm -hmm. What do you think? 77. 71. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> where where did they differ? Master of Military Might was a big one. They were so close in like everything. Yeah. And then just like a few off. Yeah. I think it's mainly the Master of Military Might. Everything else is almost tied. Mm -hmm. So that just leaves... Two final questions. That's right. The great? So this one, I am real torn on. Does he it's deserve tough. the great? Yeah, it's tough. Because he, he was a great ruler. Yeah, he did a lot of good things. He was really he wanted the best for the people and the empire in general. Mm -hmm. Traveled around, fixed a lot of stuff. Yeah. And like, I you know, I don't want to spoil too much. Um, but like Antoninus Pius is is another one he's he's less interesting yeah. but rules over peace and prosperity and it's like is that you know <laughs> trajan's this warmongering guy and we're like he's the greatest but well, you know what i'm gonna do it then you're gonna give i'm it to gonna him? say i think he deserves it because he did a great job and he's propelling the roman empire to the, the peak of their golden age yeah okay i'm send gonna give it, it to him too let's go send it he's the great he deserves it he is it. the greatest but he is great. He is a great. Well That's done, sure. Hadrian. So there's only one thing left. What name yeah. do we give this we man? We gotta include travel. We have to that, okay, make, okay. use a yeah. cool so, word to describe yeah, travel. Yeah. So you, I looked up synonyms. <laughs> 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 I was like, okay. There you go. Yeah. So I have the the basic one. I have only have four. So if you have others, mm -hmm. I'm willing to we'll hear them. So the Hadrian the traveler. Yeah. Easy well, enough. You know. Hadrian the tourist. Mm. Meh. Eh. Hadrian the globetrotter. Okay. Hadrian the Voyager. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, the voyaging's more of like a see. discovering new. I guess, yeah. Also, yeah. So, yeah, I, I had the same idea that it needed to be something related to travel, but I couldn't find anything really interesting to give for that. The mobile. <laughs> Hadrian the mobile. I mean, it's accurate. It is accurate. Um, Man, this one is tough. It's not, they're not expeditions either. Like, are they? I are mean, those kind usually of. Usually to new fronts, or is that? But just what? What like are you gonna going to give them? The out? expeditioner? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, words, I mean, words are tough. I mean, we could just call him the traveling emperor, but it's kind of lame. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, cor it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. I mean, maybe we just got to go with the traveling emperor. Do you think that or traveler or? I mean, let's look up the defini definition of a voyage. Yeah, sure. Let's see if we can justify Get it. The language. This is the most discussion we've had on it's a important. title. This is important. <laughs> Voyager definition. A voyager is someone who goes on a long trip, especially if he travels in a ship, yeah. which he did. He did. He did. He traveled plenty by ship, and he went he on a long trip. He, he is the voyager. He, he did go on multiple trips. Yes. Multiple okay, can we get long a, trips. Let's see. A traveler to a distant land, especially one who travels by sea. Okay. It we, fits in there. It wasn't like yeah. he mostly traveled by sea, but he did. He did travel by sea sometimes. He did. He did. He did sometimes. <laughs> for sure. And I'm looking to see if there are any like synonyms that are better, but there aren't. So for, no. we can yeah. also, if we have an epiphany in that last That's round, at the end, we better, can, we can, can make, make a better title. But we'll go with Voyager for now. Let's go. Hadrian the Voyager. I do agree, though. It definitely feels like that is a, um, a seafaring yeah, thing. Yeah, but. definitely. Well, that's why the definition is especially. Yep. Right. Yep. It's technically correct. That's what it's known for. That's, that's what we're going for here. Technically well, correct. Great job, job, Hadrian. Uh, 
that was, I had a lot of fun researching him because his yeah, his, a lot of his stuff journey there. was his very fun. Trips, yeah, great. Seventy one. He's one of the highest ranking emperors, as one would expect, because he's super interesting. <gasps> I thought of another title for him. Okay, the failed uniter. Oh, because I don't, I don't. He did unite <laughs> <laughs> through genocide. Yeah. <laughs> eventually. Yeah, I don't think we want to give him something related to just I such know. a small portion. When most of it was the travels, I like your geni- I like your brain though. You're ticking on these today. Is, it, is a four year genocidal war really a small thing? <laughs> <laughs> In the grand scheme million, of things, maybe people. not. But that's all right. We'll think on it. Yeah. Later. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. I had a lot of fun recording this one. And it yeah, won't you did, probably you did so much research in a week. Let me tell you. Yes, dude, I am it on it. And I've already got the next strip half written. Wild, wild. Yeah, it's that. crazy. I'm way on it, dude. <laughs> but I'm actually being honest about that. So yeah. hopefully we'll have another one within a week or two <laughs> instead of another month and a half. Yeah, you know, life. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye. Yeah.